Welcome to Part 2C2A, the last of the series of shows about microfossils. This one is about radiolarians. These animals, like protists, are found first in the straight of early Cambrian age and so provide biostratigraphic, climatic, and oceanographic information throughout the remainder of the Phanerozoic eon. Their skeleton, called a test, is commonly a complex structure of solid rods, bars, spines, and needles of hydrated silicon dioxide, opal, a mineral rather strongly resistant to erosion, so easily fossilized, uh, but subject to dissolution under certain conditions. As this slide demonstrates, the geometry of radiolarian test is extremely diverse, but until 1981 were classed into only three orders, Spumularia, Nasalaria, and Pheodaria. As the tests of the Pheodaria are hollow and extremely fragile, they are very rarely fossilized, so are not included in the following cursory review, but posted here is the main difference in the structure of the two fossil-yielding orders. All small area have a radial symmetry, commonly expressed as one or more perforate inner medullary shells that are pierced by regular patterns of holes called pores and an outer cortical shell, also perforate and commonly spined. In the Nasalaria, the shell is bell or cone-shaped with its divisions aligned along an axis. These next slides point out some of the names given the organic constituents of these proteins and their location in the test. The central inner portion is called endoplasm. The outer enclosing portion is ectoplasm. The endoplasm is granular cytoplasm that amoeba-like includes the nucleus, Golgi bodies, mitochondria, vacuoles, liquid droplets, and reserves of food. It is enclosed in a proteinous membrane, a sac, which in the spumularia is pierced by many small, regularly spaced holes, pores, through which communication with the ectoplasm is assured, and through which pseudopodia emerge. This pellicle bounded sac is called the central capsule. In Nasolarians, the organic matter is shaped by the form and dimensions of the conical or bell shaped test. So its form is commonly like an elongated pear. If pores exist in the membrane bounding the central capsule, they may be confined to a band at its lower end, but in general are replaced by a central basal aperture called a mouth. The central capsule controls reproduction, biochemical synthesis, and the generation of energy. The ectoplasm envelops the capsule, called the kalimna, it is a froth or web-like mass of hyaline alveoli filled with a saline fluid or gelatinous material. The kalimna contains uh, digestive vacuoles, eliminates waste, houses protective dinoflagellates, and in many light-seeking species, lodges photosynthetic algal symbionts that secrete organic nutrients to supplement the protist supply of energy. This broad brush summary sketched an established tripartite classification of radiolaria, citing two orders, spumularia and nasolaria, that have been and are widely used in biostratigraphy. But current classifications 
of fossil radiolarians are more discriminatory and are under constant critical review. Here are the currently recognized major groups with their ranges in time and relative abundances. The asterisks indicate the existence of two other extinct Paleozoic orders. Their names and outstanding characteristics are posted here, and the 13 families that comprise them are listed on this graph. This recent posting provides current data on lower Paleozoic groups and their evolution. Pictures of a few of the genera of the three extinct orders are on these slides. Archaeospicularians occur only in the early Paleozoic. The Albalarians appear in latest Ordovician times with the Negadorato-Ekiskidi. But the four Albalarian families with bilaterally symmetrical cells evolved and flourished only during the later Paleozoic. All have an initial spicule with cavial ribs. Latin fistularia appear in lower Carboniferous strata and are numerous in Permian rocks. Their small initial cell, spongiose surfaces, and triangular disposition make for easy recognition. In 1981, Kosir and Mosler erected the suborder Antactinaria for radiospumularians with a more or less conspicuous initial spicular system of three to five spines on a median bar. True spumularia have no spicular system, so most radial species of Paleozoic age previously called spumularia are now assigned the order Antactinaria or the family Antactinidae. Antactinid families and their ranges are posted on the chart. Note that of the seven families that originated in Paleozoic times, only one, the polyantactinidae, is extant. Typical Paleozoic antactinarians are pictured on this slide. Note the great differences in the construction of both naked and shelled genera. On this chart, Six families of true spumularians are highlighted, but only two of them are indicated to be unquestionably present, both restricted to the late Permian. However, older ones have been reported. A search for confirmed Paleozoic species in available respected sources found only the six forms shown on this slide. But the text under the previous slide applies to all Spumularia, so is worthy of your attention. The chart of the Nasolaria shows the style of the spicule and the characteristic bilateral, axially oriented body of shelled forms. Families are listed in the order of appearance. First true Nasolarians that appear in strata of Devonian age and diversify during the Carboniferous are absent in Permian strata. The slide shows some of the wide range in their architecture. The last chart lists all of the 28 families of Paleozoic radiolaria and their ranges. Many of them are depicted in these slides of representatives of the successive periods. The next show covers, albeit cursorily, the Mesozoic and Cenozoic representatives of these protists and includes comments on their lifestyles in relation to taphonomic preservation and their use in biostratigraphic, climatic, and oceanographic studies. <laughs>